At this point, we need to know where the Sesame Street characters were during January the 6th. <laughs> Y'all already know what time it is. I got the black bean neck on. Oh, I'm so glad y'all came back to see me. What is going on, y'all? Welcome to this petty, petty, petty edition of Kingaree's video, girl. I missed you all so much, girl. Content, content, content coming out today. I have a lot of things to say. What is going on on Sesame Street, girl? <laughs> what is going on for not just Rosita, but also who else but some other characters that just have been seeming like harassing black um, kids, not like giving them high fives? Like, girl, I got so much to say about that. A whole bunch of stuff is going on. We got the situation with Monique coming to Netflix with a special girl. I have thoughts with that. Jay Ellis um, <laughs> marrying this white woman and taking a picture. It looked like he kissed a white powdered cake. I mean, girl, you, you can't, like, it's just so much. Speaking of pink cakes, not pink cakes, but white <laughs> We got to talk about the pink sauce. So many things to get into in this Kenya Reads video, but y'all already know before we do anything, what we got to do? Period. So what's going on, you all? I will say that I am in a good mood. I am laughing at all the things that are going on this week. I cannot wait to see y'all reaction to some of the thoughts I have on the several things that we got to talk about today. But also, I'm in a pretty decent, good mood. Um, I'm, you know, it's some things. I will say that I, ooh, I've been talking about this a lot on um, Patreon. If you're not subscribed to Patreon, subscribe to Patreon. But recently, I have been moving my body. I've been exercising. Um, and I will say that leaving, when I do leave from exercising and stuff, I feel really good. It's been really good, important for my mental health. Um, I'm just curious to see what is going to happen over the next couple of months, next couple of weeks, because, girl, I hate it, but I love the feeling when I leave, like, the endorphins and everything that are going and just making me feel good. And I honestly really, really need it. I really, really need it, and I appreciate you all so much for loving on me, watching it, and consuming my content. I love y'all. love y'all. love y'all. Uh, but, girl, I'm doing good. I'm doing well. Sending positive energy out to everybody um, who's watching this girl because we finna get some we finna get to some laughs. So go ahead, let's go ahead and get into the tea for today. This is the tea for today. Hey Jordan, my guy Jordan on Instagram that goes to prayer review. Is that when he posted prayer review, like I said, P Valley? Queen Marie? <laughs> but girl, we have got to talk about Sesame Street. What is going on at Sesame Street, girl? Um, honestly, the video got posted and it made its ways. You saw these two black girls in the Sesame Street, you know, memorabilia, they had their backpacks on. You know, they are excited to, you know, like see these characters and stuff, these 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 things. And the character just like walked off on them, like, oh girl, I don't see y'all, and just didn't give him a high five. And the person who brought it up was like, hey, you know. This is an issue, and da da da. da. Like, like, I don't know what's going on, but y'all, we need to look into this. Like, I don't, I don't know. And you know, quick, like, you know, folks will say, "Oh, you're playing the race car. Y'all making everything a moment." It's just like they probably didn't see the kids. But anytime black folks bring up race, it's important because it happens. Then, before you know it, several other videos came down the pipeline of kids being pushed by Sesame Street characters, not being acknowledged, like going to high five all of the white folks and even the black folk, the black kids, you're not, like they don't recognize. You had so many parents, so many parents post these videos of these kids, you know, not getting any attention from these Sesame Street characters. And Sesame Street literally dropped the ball. The first response was, girl, I don't know what y'all trying to do, like, but, we we good over here. We don't do that. And da da da. da. That was a one time event. Then you had black folks starting to post this stuff. Now think about all the black folks who probably deleted that video. Like I delete stuff. I don't keep a lot of stuff on my phone. I don't like to keep a lot of stuff. So think about the black folks who had the videos who didn't post it, who didn't have it. Like this is stuff that black folks know is a problem, recognize that racism, but get gaslit. Like no, it's not racism. I don't think what it's a thing, but it is a thing. And black folks were able to prove that it was a thing. Um, and girl, now Sesame Street's like, hey, we, we doing some diversity training. We getting the girls together. You know, y'all need to do a thorough investigation. And I think this is an interesting conversation because 
the it goes to show you like I've been thinking a lot about how tech is racist and tech is the, the internet is racist social media and all these things are racist all the other stuff like this being created because it's been created by people who are racist like a, a, a racist computer can't exist because the person is like that is creating the computer is teaching it racism so you have these people who are inside these puppets who are their own biases and anti-blackness is jumping out and they don't want to speak to these black kids they don't want to interact with these black kids so these characters are supposed to be loving are being, you know, what's the name, uh, being controlled um, or put on by folks who have, like, anti-black views. Like, you're not telling me, like, I believe everyone, I believe these parents. I believe, I believe it. And I know that black folks, a lot of black folks, double check, triple check, and cross check before they call things racist because they know it's going to be pushed back immediately. And it's not because folks don't believe them. It's because white folks don't want to acknowledge that it's an issue. They want to push it away. So I'm glad that black folks have sounded off and posting these videos and calling Sesame Street out. And girl, now y'all got home. Um, the kids are distraught and baby, they got a lawyer and everything. I don't blame them. We ain't get reparations. We gonna find them somehow. Period. Y'all gonna pay up. So um, I'm sending energy out to these these parents and stuff because that is devastating to take your child somewhere like that and then you know they didn't got disrespected. And then you see like all the other kids have all the other black kids have experienced the same thing. I need to know where Rosita was during January 6th, period. I need to know. She needs to be speaking in front of Congress right now. Uh, so, yes. So, let's move on. We've got some other things to talk about. Let's get into Tasha K losing her appeal. <laughs> we already knew that. I honestly wonder what was inside of Tasha K's mind when she was appealing. Like, girl, you are not smart. You are ta Latasha Kibi. You are not, Kibi Studios, y'all are not smart. Like, this appeal made no sense. What was her strategy? What was her strategy? Girl, you got to pay up. You might as well contact Klarna. You might as well go ahead and open one of their physical cards up or something. You're going to have to be making some payments. You're going to have to make some payments, girl. you got to make some payments. And that's a that's a big judgment, girl. Like, I know I owe some apartment probably like $1,000 or $2,000, but $4 million, I still got approved for my house. Hey, what's the tea? But girl, and I didn't pay that. Uh, I'm not paying that. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Some things, I'm going to wait seven years to pay it off. Latasha, Latasha Kibi, she ain't going to pay it. So, baby, um, Latasha, Latasha Kibi might not be able to drink no um, no hot tasting wine no more. She might have to go down a couple of bottles because she got to make some payment arrangements. You need to pay up. Now, I, we've talked about power dynamics when it comes to a, a celebrity like Cardi B suing a, um, a, a blogger or whatever, like the blogger lady. Natasha was told several times to leave Cardi B the hell alone. She never did do it. She never did do it. She just wants to continue on. And as someone who sat next to her and spoke with her on her what's name, she does have some very trash views. She's transphobic. She's anti-black and she's colorist as hell. Um, and I feel for her dark-skinned children, to be honest. Uh, because, like, if, you, if you're saying some stuff like that and we're seeing your clear, like, signs of anti-blackness and stuff, you should be raising no children, to be honest. And I'm just going to say it, like, and it's like, you know, she's not the only one. But uh, some of y'all colorism be really jumping out and it be affecting y'all children and y'all and y'all loved ones and y'all don't be knowing it. But just seeing how she speaks about stuff and how she was so adamant of misgendering uh, Zaya Wade a couple of years ago. She's a trash person. I don't really care. I hope I hope she sues every penny. I hope she goes broke doing this because she deserves it. Uh, but she lost an appeal. Just say, girl, what that? What is this, honey? It's not giving. You gotta go figure it out, boo. Take it back. All the fake it. Take it back. Let's move on to one of the most funniest things happening to like this week. Is Jay Ellis getting married to his long hidden white woman? So y'all remember Jay Ellis who played Lawrence on um, Insecure? He has been in a relationship for a while with this white woman and he completely hid her. Like, baby. You would not see any pictures besides the pictures she posts on her Instagram. Let me tell you something, these black actors, when they they like they make sure to keep these white women they be in relationships with off 
line. They do not want to be seen with them. Like, girl. And I'm very curious at how y'all who are immersed and benefit so much from black culture, how y'all do not have um, black partners. And I had made a comment. I was talking to my friend earlier. Like, if your partner is white and y'all have a business, your business is not black owned. It's a plantation. <laughs> I'm sorry, girl. I don't make the rules. I'm just telling you what it is. You cannot call this black-owned business and you are in a relationship with a white person. Girl, it's a plantation. Period. <laughs> and your partner is the overseer. <laughs> That's, I, I just, I tell the truth. What I'll say, I, I tell the truth. I get, get ready for the redemption battle. Period. But girl, hilarious, hilarious. Back on Jay Ellis. Jay Ellis married his wife. I'm pretty sure he's in love or whatever it is. And love is love. Period. Pride symbol here. Love is love. He's in love with this white woman. Marry her. But baby, what was funny about it is that the picture of them walking down holding hands as you zoomed in. I looked over to my left. Oops, there it goes. The baby powder on the face. He has nothing but white woman all on his nose, all on his lips. He actually makes me want some powdered donuts. Not those type of powdered donuts. If you know, you know. But not those type of powdered donuts because I don't, I don't partake in that type of stuff. But the other girls do and it's no shade to them. Get how you live it. But it ain't me, girl. I can barely do THC if you have me. Doctor Strange and everything. But um, yeah, like it just looked like he just got hit in the face with a with a diaper, a, a diaper with baby powder. It was all in his face. It was written all over his face. Like as much as he was trying to keep this white woman scrubbed off the internet, it was all on his face. Girl, uh, Miss Honey, <laughs> girl, that was hilarious. But they were eating Jay Ellis up. Baby, he had them comments turned off. I don't blame him. He said, "Y'all ain't finna, not that one." Y'all ain't gonna be dragging my white woman. Y'all ain't gonna be doing anything. But he did play in Top Golf. I heard he did a pretty decent job in Top Golf. I said Top Golf. He took the top of the Maybach. That song was so trash. Um, but what was it called? Top Gun. I'm about to go see that. Uh, my good boo, um, T, told me that it was good. Then um, my homegirl, um, Sharonda, over there, Pay Your Weight, the YouTube channel, told me it was the best movie that came out this year. So I gotta go check that out. Um, I did a whole review for Nope. Nope, did a review for it, non-spoiler review, and then spoiler towards the end. Check it out, girl. Let me know your thoughts, cause I had some things to say about the movie, but y'all got to go. But the girls over at Patreon already had access to it. They already been watching it for a couple of hours. Period. Hey, Patreon girl, speak up. Hey, I see y'all. But let's move it on, cause I'm getting kind of thirsty, and I want some pink sauce to go on my nachos, girl. What is going on with this pink sauce? Uh, is this Uncle Clifford pink sauce? Like, is this the sauce that him and Little Murder make when they be clapping, clapping, clapping? My foot up, my foot up. So, girl, there was this viral video on TikTok of this, this quote-unquote chef, and she was making uh, this pink sauce. And folks was like, oh, my gosh, I want it. Uh, where is this pink sauce at? How can we find it? And, girl, <laughs> come to find out, Ooh, it is making people sick. Some people are uh, <laughs> saying it made them sick. It was didn't taste good. Somebody, somebody's accusing the uh, the chef of coming over and serving them undercooked salmon. It's a mess. So this is from the Daily Beast. Pink sauce is literally what it sounds like. A pink color sauce to be used with anything from fried chicken to tacos to garden salad. Sounds versatile, except that in creators Chef Pie's increasingly viral videos, pink sauce literally looks like Pepto-Bismol or liquid amoxicillin or slime. Looking at it makes me and much of the internet feel physically ill. Imagine putting that thing in your mouth. Girl, that's done. This is a white woman wrote this. So a lot of people have been describing it as sweet and savory and seasoned and all that. But she's been coming under fire um, after the nutrition facts. Uh, Labor had, you know, misspelled the ingredients and suggested the bottle somehow offered 444 servings of pink sauce. <laughs> some people said it had a rancid smell upon arrival. Um, like some folks said it tastes like ranch. Like, girl, I don't know. She was selling it for like $20, $30 a bottle or something. Um, and she posted a video of her making some, and then she had like some garlic club, like some garlic in it with some olive oil, and it, like she didn't have no hair that on. She had no like it was just she was just in the kitchen. Now I don't have anything with against chefs, you know, not wearing 
her dance or whatever. Something like sometimes folks do be, you know, I had a, a person cook or whatever, and they didn't have all the stuff, and I, like, but they were groomed, well groomed, and whatever. But when you are making like mass production product, you are working, work, working, working. You're sweating, you do all this stuff. Like you in your kitchen making this sauce, you charging thirty dollars, and you send this stuff out. Somebody made a joke and said that she sent some, um, some. Uh, what did she see? She had mailed a boiled. Uh, <laughs> Oh, uh, seafood bowl boil. <laughs> she had made mailed. A, she had mailed a seafood boil. Let me tell y'all something. Uh girl, they've been dragging it. They've been saying that you know the secret sauce, the pink sauce is a bunch of mess and it's just not giving. It's it's just it don't taste good. Some folks have been dragging. It's been a big conundrum all on social media. Some folks are trying to you know y'all support black women. Y'all support black business. Girl, a lot of these folks be white labeling stuff, overcharging stuff, folks for stuff so they can take their ass to Punta Cana. Uh, the same folks selling these cheap ass jock straps and selling them for forty, thirty dollars so they can take their ass across the damn world and take pictures and tell us that we're poor. I like, I'm just, I'm tired at this point. The economy is collapsing. All of this stuff, girl, it's just a mess. So, girl, y'all look up, look up the pink sauce. Tell me what y'all think about it, girl. I won't be eating that. Um, it, I it's not clicking for me. I don't want no pink sauce, girl. Uh, uh, uh. No, ma'am. But moving on, let's talk about Joe Byron. Joe Biden has Coviana. She got the Rona, honey. She got the Rona, the Rona that came and knocked on that 79 year old man's lungs. Uh, it's just not a good look for <laughs> our president. Somebody put the post a video of uh, <laughs> Eva crying when Joe Biden got elected. As one nation, one nation. But joy coming Come to on, Joe! We will get through this. We're gonna together. get through this together, y'all. Together. Go, Joe! <laughs> Girl! <laughs> that video it did not age well. Oh my god. Oh the things. I'm over here screaming. But Joe Biden has COVID. Girl, the B, what is the B Blink 82 virus? Girl, the whatever. I don't know, what, what is it called, BA421? I don't know, girl. She run her tap dance on everybody. Koviana has yet to get me. I'm thankful that she has not got me together, yeah. But I have been very relaxed, I will say. I will go to the grocery store wearing my mask. When I do go to the gym, I am not wearing a mask. It is very difficult to wear a mask while you're at the gym. Even if you start, like I sweat, if you start sweating, girl, the mask get wet, it's like it's no good no more. But I try to make sure that I'm working away from folks as best I can. And it's a unnecessary risk for me. Uh, but when I go to the grocery store or anything else, girl, it's giving mask for mask. I'm just not going to be able to deal with it. But um, a lockdown is not happening. Um, like people, nobody's wearing masks. When I went to the movies Tuesday, me and Sharana probably was the only folks. There was probably like six people out of like a couple of hundred who was sitting in this movie theater and did not have no mask on. They were walking out. These folks did not have no mask on. Like, none of them had on a mask. Like, it was, it's just bad. Um, so, we have this very um, infectious, like, new strand, um, this, this this variant that is infecting the girls. And um, it's it's just, I don't know, girl. Then we got monkey pox rolling around. She ran her tap dance on the girls in New York and coming down to Atlanta. It's too much. It's too much, girl. Like, y'all girls want to go to the clubs. I'm not going to no club. I don't want to go to no club. I, I, the most you can get from me is a restaurant. A restaurant. I don't want to smoke no hookah. I, until I get this vaccine for Miss Monkeypox, until all the white gays in New York and everywhere else consume all of them. Girl, I did a whole thread about that on, on Twitter because it's getting out of control. Um, Because black and brown folks have not been able to get these vaccines. And they're the ones who are more at risk. Um, and I have some thoughts. I think that the, the monkeypox, you know, it's not a gay disease. It's not, you know, necessarily transferred from, like, sex. It can, but it's really skin to skin contact. That's why we want to keep saying, reiterating, there is no such thing as safe sex. There's only safe for sex. Let me, let me repeat that. There is no such thing as safe sex. It's only safer sex. When you're talking about describing having sex with a condom, you say, hey, girl, we have sex with a condom, or you did condomless sex or whatever. But sex is sex. Sex is what you make it, all the other stuff. We can do, all do things to mitigate risk when it comes to sex, but we cannot, there's no such thing as safe sex. Like, even 
Like it's just it's just safer, like safer. It is always going to be a risk. It's a risk when I drive my car down the street. It's a risk when we going to the gym in the middle of a pandemic. There is risk. You can mitigate risk as much as you can, but it's still going to be what risk. That's my little HIV spill, girl. You know, girl, I hop into my little advocacy bag every once in a while. Where my girl Ronnie at? We hop. I hop into my advocacy bag every once in a while. Let the girls know. That um, I know what I'm talking about. Like, until y'all, you know, y'all pharmaceutical companies and stuff who need the gays to come and tell the girls what to do, hit me up at justinatkingreads.com, period. Because uh, I, I love to talk to girls. I love to get paid to do the work. To do what I, I love to get paid to do the things for my community. Um, somebody has said they will drag any influencer that the White House um, taps to have a conversation about monkeypox. Girl, I don't call, consider myself an influencer. Um, I just get online and I give my thoughts on things. I'm a culture commentator, a culture cr creator. I don't, I don't know. I'm just the king of reads, period. I'm not an influencer girl. I ain't trying to be no influencer girls. I'm the rest of the girls. I don't, I don't do that. But, um, but yeah, so, girl, I went from, from, I was like, see how everything is connected. But, um, I don't know if I want, is, is he getting a speedy recovery? He is four times vaxxed, all the other stuff. It is important to get vaccinated. If you have not been vaccinated, please get vaccinated, get boosted, all of those things to protect you because these viruses around here, I got about 20 or 30 um, um, testing kits because I'm ready for Miss Wade because I know she's coming. My birthday coming next month. Still don't know what I want to do with that. So many things, but uh, Joe Biden getting COVID doesn't surprise me considering all the stuff that's going on, girl. It's not looking good for her campaign and everything right now. But what's just interesting that as bad as, um, you know, Joe Biden's poll numbers are, it's not really affecting um, the, the, um, the, the Congress. It's not really affecting, like, senators and stuff. So you got all these folks who say, oh, the Democrats are going to get slaughtered in the midterms. They're going to get slaughtered. They're going to get slaughtered. I'm like, girl, that happens every time. I get so tired. Like, I don't even know what the point of y'all even saying that shit is. They're going to get slaughtered. <laughs> I'm like, the folks who are not interested in electoral politics and electoral whatever and voting stuff, it's not enough for y'all to, it's not enough of us to make a, a significance. It's just not enough. A lot of folks who do recognize that, hey, the Democrats don't be seeming to do nothing. Democrats, you know, they ain't doing nothing, but they still take their ass to the polls. They still go vote. The majority of them folks is still going to vote. The majority of black and brown folks are still going to vote Democratic. They're still going to vote for Democrats. So I don't understand, like, if it's anything, it's independence. And some Republicans like going back, but it's just like I can tell some of y'all don't be having no um no what's name because y'all just be saying stuff just to be saying shit. And I'm like, girl, where's the research? Where's the what's name? Where where is it at? It's like where is the supporting evidence of this of these some of the things that y'all be saying? It, and it just don't be there. She's non-existent. Uh, but other things. What else do we want to talk about? We uh, drag it. Um, yes, let's get into my home girl Monique. Monique, the queen of comedy. Period. Um, is now working with. Netflix on her comedy special. She won. Monique won. Period. Monique won. Take it how you want. Monique won. Like, folks can say, oh, she went about it wrong. She did. She stood 10 toes down and her stuff called it out, did what she had to do, and got, like, I don't think this is a loss. Like, folks saying, well, I would have went back to, um, yeah, I would have went back because da 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 da. Like, girl, we all on the plantation, please, girl. Like, let Monique decide what type of plantation she wants to be on because we all on the plantation at the end of the day. Um, I just didn't get like some folks being upset that she went like she, well, somebody said, well, she can quit. Some boy on Twitter, and I wish I could post this tweet, but he has me blocked. I could go on the Google what's name, but I'm not going to be too disrespectful. But what's so funny, he's a, he calls himself a vocal intellect, like he's a vocalist or something. Um, and he sings, he's in the industry. I used to follow him. But you know how the girls be when you call out their faves or something. They want to call you nasty or whatever. Like, nasty but classy, period. But these are industry folks, like, at saying something like, oh, so is she going to shut up now? You better hope to God that you don't ever need to to do something like that. Like, to, to, to ask for... Um, support while you are talking about the discrimination that you, that you are um, experiencing. Like, I just don't get it. I don't get it. I just really just don't get it. Like, the girls just be dragged like, wait, she gonna shut up now? 
What? What do you get out of that? Like, what do you get out of that? It was just so dumb to me. Um, but Monique, I feel like Monique won the um, the whole conversation. Like, she was going back and forth with them. You know, they settled. Ain't no telling how much she got for her special. But this is this works good for Netflix. Netflix has lost almost a million subscribers. Um, I think what this this quarter or whatever. PR around this whole thing with Monique hasn't been really looking good from uh, for Netflix and stuff. So they need a win. Even though it's not a big win, it's a win for them. Monique is talented. I hope her special is good. I'm pretty sure it will be because Monique is always funny. And I'm loving that she's working on other projects and she's doing her thing. This has been going on for years. The Black K-E-W-N's S added on um, who blackballed her. I owe her an apology. Oprah, Tyler Perry. Uh, Y'all owe this woman an apology. And also that bald head man. Steve Harvey, who who tap danced and now that he putting on cute suits and stuff, now folks got respect for him. I can't stand Steve Harvey's shoe shop. Ooh, girl. You already had choices. Uh, but yeah, girl, I think this is all I want to talk about. I think I was that. I think that was it. Yeah, Monique. Yeah, Monique, yeah. Oh, yes. The a whole thing with um uh, Quinta Bronson. Um, and the Abbott Elementary stuff. If you've not heard about it, this um, person by the name of Christine is accusing, um, you know, these folks of copywriting her stuff, copyright infringement. Like, hey, girl, I came up with this idea a couple years ago, and I went to these folks, and I pitched it, and, you know, now that Quentin did hers, like, y'all to kind of piggybacked off what I did, and da 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 And a lot of folks were like, oh, this is nothing but the devil, this is that and that. Like, I don't, first of all, I don't know what Christine looks like. She might be a white woman. She might be a white woman of color. She could be a black woman. Um, I don't think mockumentaries are, like, girl, it, the mockumentaries is not something new. The, the uh, story or whatever about uh, um, uh, school. Girl, you're going to be suing the folks who came up with Matilda. Uh, <laughs> like, girl, what's going on? Like, what? Um, I, but I also, when people accuse folks of stuff, like still in work or whatever, I we we need to believe them. We need to believe them because it happens. It happens. It happens. It happens. But once the the tea start coming out, then it's like, oh okay, same thing that happened with me. Homegirl was talking all that mess. She was saying I was stole, didn't pay, didn't come to find out when it got revealed that she didn't write the stuff. Did she delete the tweets and all this other stuff? But she never did. Still to this day, it's all. It'll be a year in December. Still has yet to offer me apology from the damage behind all of that other stuff. But I do believe that it's it's okay to believe a person from the beginning until we start to see the facts and stuff. But um, girl, you know everybody don't be wanting to um, you know come back and admit that they wrong. Um, but I, I don't think that this whole thing with. Um, was copyright. I don't think that Quinta did this. Quinta's been working on this for a minute. And sometimes negativity does happen. You have to be prepared for it as um, a creative and all the other stuff. When you got a big project coming, just be expected to somebody gonna try to pull your wig. It happens. At this point, it happens each and every time, honey. Each and every time, folks be plotting. But at the same time, we do need to take some accusations and some things real. Um, that's all I got for this King of Reese video. I love y'all so much. Y'all enjoy y'all Thursday. And until next time, I'll talk y'all later on tonight. Bye.